This was another step up in attacks inside the capital. More homes hit, more lives lost. They've been so resilient. But this is really taking a toll. Tears, yes, but a steely toughness too. We'll keep ourselves together, he says, tears on his cheeks. We will remain strong. The city was roused early again with multiple strikes in all points around the capital, and they're expecting a lot more over the next few days. The sound of battle is unavoidable now in the capital, but this army chaplain called it an unequal fight. This isn't war, he says. This is international terrorism. War is armies against armies, but when armies attack civilians, this is international terrorism. The mayor called it a dangerous moment and immediately slapped a 35-hour curfew on the capital. How would you describe the spirit of the Ukrainian people and your feeling about this? The spirit, right now, everyone is angry. I talk to the people. They don't want to leave. In this activity, bring much more energy to everyone, and everyone understand. Don't want to leave, want to defend. Defend our city. They are meeting this onslaught with fortitude cleaning out their broken homes and just getting on with it. Some have sent their families and children outside Kyiv because they've known the Russian military was homing in on this city. Oh, oh, these are all the children's your toys yeah, yeah, the yeah. children's things all. Yeah. But the war has reached right into their living rooms and balconies now. My parents still in uh, Kyiv, uh, living on left bank of uh, Kyiv. My sister too. Uh, <clears throat> but we still there. You still here? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not afraid because I know it's. Uh, I believe our victory. The residents know their homes and their lives are collateral damage in the battle for this, the prize, their capital city. But they're not bowed. I don't think I am brave, but uh, I don't want to leave my city, I don't want to leave my country. And uh, if it will need be, I will uh, take a shoot, take a gun and uh, go, go to fight and uh, kill Russians. The capital's mayor expects more of this and has warned that Russian activity is expected to substantially increase over the next 48 hours, and he's urged his fellow residents to be wary. He and his brother believe the Russian military is very close right now, and they've no intention of going anywhere. You can throw a stone and hit a Russian soldier. I'm not even kidding. And besides, he points out, they have increasingly few options now. We have no other choice but defend our city, our capital and our country. What is the other choice? Run for life? We don't have other life. Our life is here. We didn't invade anyone. They came to our home and killing our men, women and children. There's a deepening frustration amongst Ukrainians as time runs out for any concrete outside help with soldiers, civilians and journalists being killed and injured. This must be devastating for anyone who comes from this area. Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts about how much the international community it is, is doing? It is not just devastating, this is war. Behind me, a building where civilians were killed with the Russian rocket, and this is not just the first and not the last. It doesn't matter who you are on the Ukrainian soil now, with a press bench, a little girl, a boy, an adult, man or woman, or an old person, you're a target from Russia, from Russian army. But so many of Kiev's residents refuse to be intimidated despite it all. Come and have coffee with us, she's saying to our crew. When will you be open? She takes barely a heartbeat to think about this. Uh, soon, she says. 
Even with the Russian military closing in on them, their spirit seems unbreakable. Alex Crawford, Sky News in Kiev.